Now we're going to look at the dynamics of this modal model just to re review that. So this idea that uh, you need attention to transfer information from sensory into short-term memory. And this just says that there's a lot more kind of information present in your low-level visual system compared to what you can represent higher up. This is really compression, this exact process of uh, taking all this highly detailed sensory information and compressing it down into this much smaller capacity conscious short-term memory system. Uh, we'll see this in a second, how that plays out. These processes of rehearsal, so this explicit attempt to kind of drive this re recurrent activity among neurons to keep those neurons firing, uh, that's a critical dynamic in, in short-term memory. And then this process of encoding and retrieval, so these more deliberate, uh, explicit, conscious kind of attempts to take information in short-term memory and really try to remember it. So whatever it is that you do when you try to say, I'm going to try to remember that person's name, uh, that process is kind of encoding. And then you can have a lot of different strategies to explicitly try to retrieve information from long-term memory. So there's some interesting dynamics about kind of how you get information between short-term and long-term memory. And, you know, mechanistically, when we think about what's happening in the brain, uh, this process of retrieval is simply somehow translating those synaptic changes, again, in the hippocampus mostly, but also other areas into patterns of activity back out in the higher levels of the cortex, these short-term uh, activity patterns. So you can go back and forth basically between synaptic encoding of information and this neural activity in these high levels of the brain. So that process of encoding and retrieval of information uh, is really the key dynamic at the conscious high level between short-term memory and long-term memory. One of the best illustrations of the low level part of those dynamics is the Sperling task. This is a classic 1960s kind of cognitive psychology task. So basically you see this kind of grid of letters and you have two different conditions. In one condition, you get this thing flashed up, it disappears after like 100 milliseconds, and then you have to report in the full report condition as much as you can remember, all the letters, okay? And typically people can report about four, four and a half items. However, if you do this partial report uh, condition, then uh, we flash the display and then say, report only the letters in the middle row, for example. So you get that flash. That flash of memory is still present in your iconic memory system. And now when I tell you, even if I tell you after the fact, just report the, the letters in the, the middle row, for example, um, as long as it's within that kind of uh, duration of the neural firing in the, of the visual memory in this iconic visual memory, you can report back those three letters with high accuracy, okay? If I told you in advance, just, just tell me the, the, the letters in the center row, for example, that would be really easy because you could focus your attention when the display is up. But even after the fact, you can focus your attention on that kind of residual activity in your visual system and pull those things out and do and get very high accuracy. So that demonstrates how inner attention kind of interacts with uh, neural activity to uh, sort of quote unquote transfer information from uh, iconic memory into short-term memory. And there's a really important fact about neural communication that also is really important to highlight here. Uh, in the computer metaphor, we, we literally think about like you know, there's a representation in some, you know, encoding system like ASCII or uh, UTF, as it is now known, um, that allows uh, information to be kind of passed around as such in, in computer systems, essentially without any loss or corruption. Uh, and that's how systems transfer stuff from like one part of RAM to another part of RAM or from RAM to the hard drive and back. Um, using these kind of languages, this encoding of information in a, in a specified way. But neurons do not operate in that way. Neurons are much more like this game of telephone that you might have played 
where people kind of whisper from one neural population to the next here. Um, and you see exactly these kinds of corruptions of the information and transformations of the information because the neurons don't have a standard kind of ASCII code. There is no standard code for encoding information and it doesn't get past verbatim from one area to the next. In fact, our whole uh, story is that, you know, as information activity, neural activity propagates from one part of the brain to another part of the brain, it's always getting transformed, compressed, contrast enhanced, uh, and, and used for particular purposes.